On August 14th, 2023, I hit 500K subs on YouTube. And I really thought about this video hard and I came up with eight points that I think are the most important things that made all the difference for me. And if you're missing any of these eight points, it could be the missing link to you actually blowing up on YouTube. So this is gonna be more of a candid video. I'm gonna be going over some strategies and tactics that I've used and I'm just gonna be giving you my opinion. So if you appreciate videos like this, let me know by gently tapping that like button and let's jump into it. So the first thing that I recommend is creating a personal brand. And the reason I recommend this is because I had five failed YouTube channels before I created a personal brand. And that was the channel that I was able to easily grow. So I had a channel on RuneScape like way back in the day. I had another channel on self-development. I had another channel on study skills. I had another channel on pharmacy related stuff because I'm a pharmacist. And then finally, I started a channel where I made one minute videos on just random topics because I was inspired by Nas Daily. And all of of those channels failed. And I think the biggest reason that they failed is because I didn't have a personal brand. The name of the niche was in the channel every single time. And so for one, if I ever got bored of a subject or if I ever wanted to start talking about something else, I wasn't able to do that because it wouldn't make sense with the channel name. And the truth is you're gonna change throughout your lifetime and your channel should be the same thing. Your channel should be able to change with you. It should be like a living, breathing thing that can evolve as you evolve. And that's what you can do with a personal brand. It's very easy for you to try out different things until something works for you. You basically just throw stuff against the wall until something sticks. Like imagine if you ask somebody at 18 years old to choose the career that they're going to do for the rest of their life. How many of those people do you think would have good outcomes? Most of them would either fail or they would hate the career that they're in. And it's the same thing with a channel. Your chances of actually enjoying the niche that you're in, if you pick one right at the very beginning, are very low. And on this channel, when I started out, I was talking about Mark Cuban's investments. I made videos reviewing products that I'd used. I made videos on cryptocurrencies. I made videos on my experience with grant writing. I made videos on how to save money, how to invest. And finally, I started making videos on college degrees and careers, and that's what really took off. Then when that took off, when I threw that against the wall and it actually stuck, that's what I ran with. And your chances of success are going to be much higher if you have a personal brand where you can pivot if the niche isn't working out or if you just don't enjoy making those types of videos anymore. Now, if you think about it, what is the real reason that people watch YouTube. Because if you've studied anything about business, you know that the way you start a business is by solving problems. So what problem is YouTube solving for people? And the truth is, the problem that YouTube is solving is people are bored and lonely. That is why they watch YouTube. Think about it. So when you make a personal brand, you're giving a lot of value because people feel like they're connecting with you. And it's almost like they're talking with a friend on a subject that they're interested in. And it's especially good if this person that they're listening to had the same problems that they're currently having, have some of the same passions that they have, or are an expert in something that they're interested in. And you have to have insanely high production quality and video quality in general if you're not showing your face, if you're not doing a personal brand. It's just so much easier to connect with people and grow if you have a personal brand because people know, like, and trust you. They feel like you're their friend and they feel like they know you, which is a phenomenon called parasocial relationships, which is kind of weird, but also interesting. Personal brands also make it easier to sell stuff. People are tired of buying from big soulless corporations. People want to buy stuff from other people. And this is why Mr. Beast products are blowing up like Feastables, KSI and Logan Paul's Prime product is blowing up as well. And this is why millions of people are able to make a full-time income off of the creator economy. Personal brands also make it easier to switch niches. Like imagine if I first started this channel and I named the channel Grant Writing Sidekick because that was one of the first videos that I made. I probably would have gotten really tired of it and given up after a few videos. So as you evolve, the topics can evolve as well when you have a personal brand. You can also build a company off of your personal brand and then sell it. An example of this is Doug DeMuro. He built the company BidsInCars.com com and then he sold it for over 80 million dollars and i think the most important thing of all is a personal brand gives you a moat and a moat when you're talking about business is basically a way to protect your product like what sets your product apart from other products and the truth is it's your personal brand no one else can ever be like you no one else can ever have your interests only you can be you and if someone else tries to copy you they're just going to be a cheap ripoff version of you now when it comes to naming you don't 
actually have to use your real name. For instance, a personal brand could be Mr. Beast or Meet Kevin, or you could also use a pseudonym like Tom Nash does. And he's very open about using this pseudonym. He basically does it just because he doesn't want people to be able to like dox him and contact him in real life. But it's still a personal brand at the end of the day. And if you have kind of a strange name like Gary Vaynerchuk that's hard to pronounce, you can call yourself Gary V. I did this with my personal brand. I have a name that everyone gets wrong, which is Shane Hummison. And that's why I just call myself Shane Hummus. So yeah, can't recommend highly enough choosing a personal brand, especially for your first channel. Once you have YouTube down and you're just an absolute master of YouTube, sure, you can go do YouTube automation or you can go make like faceless channels. It's going to be a lot harder to grow. But if you have the skills, you can do it. But you're just putting yourself at a massive disadvantage if you're not doing that for your first channel. By the way, guys, to celebrate getting 500k subscribers, I am going to be doing a workshop where I basically reveal all of my YouTube secrets and really go in depth on it. That workshop will be exactly 72 hours after this video is posted. So you can see when that workshop is by looking down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. I tried to make it as affordable as possible. I know a lot of people can't afford like a full, you know, thousand dollar course or anything. So I tried to just cram everything into that workshop and make it super affordable so that anybody watching this can afford it. It will be a live Zoom class with me. You will literally be on Zoom with me. You'll get to talk to me, ask me questions. And of course, I'll give you guys a presentation on everything I've learned about being successful on YouTube. So like I said, if you want to check that out, it'll be down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Make sure you check the date and time down there as well. And I hope to see you there. Number two is choosing a niche. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the personal brand thing. But basically, you are the niche. This is something that Dan Co says a lot. And I have to completely agree with him. And if you're worried about not picking a specific enough niche, because you don't think you're going to be able to make enough money, just look at the channel Wes Watson. This guy is a convicted felon that spent 10 years in prison. And he just started his channel talking about his prison experiences, like talking about prison gangs and riots and all kinds of things like that. And he now makes $2 million a month selling fitness, mindset and make money online type products. So if you're worried about being too specific with your niche, it's probably not as big of a problem as you think it is. Now you do want to talk about things that are either unique to you, things that are problems that you were able to overcome in your past, things that you're passionate about, or things that you are very good at. So make a list of all of those, at least 10 for each of those things that I mentioned, and then start making videos about those topics. Throw stuff against the wall until something sticks. And you might find that there's certain topics that you really enjoy talking about a lot more than other topics. And so even if the videos aren't doing that well, that's okay. You can keep talking about those topics and eventually you'll get one that takes off. But I really want to emphasize here treating your YouTube channel like a business. And like I mentioned before, in business, you make money from painful problems. So make sure that you're solving painful problems that other people have. When life gives you lemons, turn it into lemonade. You want to think of the problems that you've had in your past as a gift. Figure out how to solve the problem yourself and then help other people solve the problem too. So for me, a huge problem that I had, and I know a ton of other people out there also have this, was choosing my career. I felt like I was forced into the education meat grinder and forced to take out a ton of student loans in order to get a decent job. And I was really frustrated about that. So I started making videos about the things I did right, the mistakes that I made, the problems that I overcame, and what I've learned. And what do you know? A bunch of other people had the same problems. Number Number three, this is another thing you want to think about, which is your viewer avatar. This is the ideal person that you want to be watching your videos, subscribing to your content, and eventually buying your products. And when it comes to selecting your viewer avatar, I have a very strong opinion on this, which is your viewer avatar should be you a few years ago. Because as much as you might think that you're a unique snowflake, you aren't. There are tons of other people out there that are having the same exact problems that you're having right now. And they're also similar to you and therefore they can relate to you. So think of problems you've had in the past that you solved or made better and then teach other people how to solve those problems too. And you can talk about your wins and your losses. So if you made certain mistakes, that's completely fine. You want to be transparent about that. And you want to tell stories about how you felt at the time and your experiences and people are going to relate to those. So like I said before, I was incredibly frustrated with how the education system works here in the US where you're basically forced to take out a ton of student loans if you're poor. And I felt like 
I really didn't have any other options at the time. Now there's a lot more options, but back then I felt like I really didn't have any. So as someone who came from a poor background, I felt like I was forced to get a super expensive college degree just to be able to get a good job. So I talked about things that I did right and also things that I did wrong. And it's not just me. This is something that YouTuber Hamza does really well too. He talks about the struggles that he had in his life. He's extremely vulnerable about stuff like the emotions that he was feeling at the time. And honestly, he's way better at doing that than I am. That's why I'm kind of suggesting these other channels because I don't think I'm the best at doing just about anything except for maybe college degrees and careers. So he started talking about fitness, personal development, learning, etc., and just made content on what he'd learned, the mistakes that he'd made, etc. All right. So next number four, let's talk about how to find good video ideas. So after, you know, choosing your niche, figuring out who your target demographic is, your ideal viewer avatar, this is probably the most important thing. This is more important than thumbnails, more important than titles, more important than making good videos. The video idea is so unbelievably important. It's basically everything. So how do you come up with good video ideas? Well, I came up with this thing called the icon method. This is based off of legendary investor Carl Icon and how he evaluates companies that he's thinking about buying. So basically what Carl Icon would do is he would look at companies that are making a lot of money despite not being ran well, right? Companies that were ran like absolute garbage. They had a bunch of people who were doing absolutely nothing all day. They're just emailing each other and not actually getting any real work done. And he would identify those companies as ones that are great to buy because he had business skills and he knew he could fix them. And if they're already making money, despite the fact that they're not being run well, the reason for that is because people really have a burning desire for whatever product that company is selling. And it's the same exact thing for YouTube videos. I look for YouTube videos that have bad thumbnails, bad titles, bad quality. And despite all of those things, they're doing very well. So a lot of the time I will look for a YouTube video from a channel that's smaller, maybe less than 50,000 subscribers that has at least 100,000 views. And it's doing very well despite the fact that it doesn't have a very good title, thumbnail, intro, or overall video quality. When I see a video like that, I know the real reason people are watching is because of the idea of the video. There is a burning desire in the market for somebody to talk about this idea and not an enough people are doing it and therefore you can make a pretty low quality video and still do well. Then I will take that same idea, I will turn it into a title that is good, a thumbnail that's good, I'll make an intro that's good, and then I'll make a video that's good as well. And then I know that it's much, much more likely to do well with the YouTube algorithm. So the way you find this is by looking at the biggest keywords in your niche or things that you're interested in, typing those in on YouTube and then just scrolling down through the videos. You can also download the free video IQ plugin, which will automatically tell you how many subscribers people have. So you don't have to actually click on their profile to see that. And so if you see a video that has 500,000 views and they only have like 25K subscribers, that would be a pretty good candidate. Then you want to look at the title and thumbnail and ask yourself, is this good? Now this does take some experience. You need to actually know your stuff here. So you got to get good at making titles and thumbnails. And then if the title and thumbnail aren't very good, you click on the video and you just watch the intro. That's all I do. I do not watch the entire video. I only watch the first 30 seconds to one minute. And I'm able to judge based off of that 30 seconds to one minute, whether it's a quality video or not based on how good the intro is and how good the overall video quality and editing is. And if it's really bad across the board, that would probably be a very good candidate for a video that I would make. Another way that I use the icon method outside of YouTube is I'll find a topic that's extremely popular on a different platform like Reddit, TikTok, or Amazon books. And then I'll look on YouTube and see if that topic has blown up yet. And in many cases, if the topic hasn't blown up, up, that will be a great opportunity for you to go in and make a video on that topic. So for instance, a few years ago, there was this huge thing on Reddit about monk mode. This was a really big deal, like tons and tons of people were talking about it on Reddit and it hadn't quite gotten to YouTube yet, but then people started making videos on it and it got millions and millions of views. So that's a perfect example of using this same method, except you're using it outside of YouTube. Now, my first ever banger video was a video called the most useless degrees. And I used the icon method to find this video. I was basically searching around at different degree related videos and I found this video about this guy. It didn't even have a thumbnail. It had a pretty, you know, mediocre title. I think it was the most worthless majors and it was in all caps. And then I clicked on the video and it looked like he had recorded it with a potato. It had terrible audio. The focus was bad. The lighting was bad. He had no scripting, no editing. It was just him ranting to a camera for like 15 minutes. And this video was from a channel that had about 10,000 subscribers and it had over 500,000 views. And so I made that video and it did okay at first, but then after a little bit of 
time it blew up. And now it has over 3 million views. All right, so number five is going to be creating great titles and thumbnails. And I would have to make like an entire YouTube channel about this because it is a pretty deep topic, but titles and thumbnails are so, so important. I would argue that the title and the thumbnail is probably more important than the video itself. And I know that's kind of silly, but if you think about it, this is pretty normal in the modern world. Usually the marketing for a product is more important than the product itself. The packaging of the product makes all the difference because if it doesn't have good packaging or good marketing, nobody is going to buy it. So even if you have a good product, nobody's ever going to get to experience that. And it's the same thing with YouTube videos. It's kind of silly, but thumbnails and titles are everything. So I'm just going to talk about a few things I've noticed and a few mistakes I've seen beginners making over and over again. So the first thing about the thumbnail specifically is it needs to be simple. One thing I see beginners do over and over again is just putting lots and lots of stuff in the thumbnail because if they think, oh, if I put more effort into the thumbnail, it's going to do better. Absolutely not. Simple thumbnails almost always perform better than complicated thumbnails that have like five or six different colors and they have like 10 different people on the thumbnail and they have a bunch of different types of fonts and they have like 20 words. Those thumbnails do not perform well. And a lot of the time, people who are not experienced with YouTube will look at the thumbnails from successful YouTube channels and the first thing they think is, wow, this thumbnail is so basic, I could do way better than that. But they don't realize is the reason the thumbnail did so good is because it's so basic. Now, one thing with personal brands that I highly recommend is to show a large picture of yourself in the thumbnail. Like your face, your body should be taking up at least one third of the thumbnail. And the closer in it is on your face, the better, because you want people to be able to see the whites of your eyes because that attracts the eye. So just take some photos of yourself with your iPhone, maybe touch them up with AI apps. And then you can use Canva completely free in order to make these thumbnails at first. Later on, when you get more advanced, I recommend using Photoshop. And when you want to get really advanced, there's a product called Luminar.ai. I believe it's called Skylum now. They, they changed the name for whatever reason. And it's also referred to as Luminar Neo. But yeah, this app is incredibly good for making thumbnails pop. And I know a lot of the top YouTubers use it. Another thing is to keep the text to a minimum. We're talking three to four words max. And honestly, one to two is preferred. The less words, the better. Sometimes I'll say three to four words max and the person will put four words. When I say three to four words max, I mean four words maximum. That does not mean put four words. That means you put the least amount of words as possible, but four words max. And you want these words to be big and visible. I recommend using white text. White text is the best. I've split tested this, you know, hundreds of times and white text almost always wins. The second best is usually yellow text. And then if you're talking about something that's kind of good and bad, you can use red and green text. Oh, and if you're wondering how I split test thumbnails, I use TubeBuddy to split test them, but it's definitely not necessary, especially when you're just beginning. Another tip is to include some kind of number in the thumbnail to make it pop. For some reason, numbers attract the eyes more than words do. Another thing I want to mention is do not copy the thumbnail style of someone else who is in your niche. That's a terrible idea because that's basically their branding and you're going to be a cheap ripoff version of them. Instead, if you're going to copy a thumbnail style, do it from someone who is outside of your niche so you're not directly competing with them. Another pro tip is when you're making the thumbnail, make it really, really small on your screen because most people are going to be watching from their phones. So it's going to be very small and you want to make sure that you can still see the whites of your eyes and you can still read the text on the thumbnail. Another pro tip is to make sure that people know what your video is about just from the thumbnail alone. That's right. They should be able to know, generally speaking, what your video is about just by looking at your thumbnail. They should not have to read the title to tell what the video is about. Now that doesn't mean you give up the answer to what you're talking about in the video. So if you're talking about like top five YouTube tips, you don't want to put like the top five tips on your thumbnail, but you want to make it clear that the video is about YouTube tips and YouTube in general. And then another tip about the thumbnail is just to make sure that it has good composition. And it's kind of hard to tell if it has good composition when it's really big on your screen. So make it very tiny so that you can kind of tell. So for instance, if there's a lot of blank space in the top left, there should also be a lot of blank space in the bottom right. I think I'm, I'm not sure if my hands are in the right place, but yeah. 
and it's kind of hard to explain composition, but just go look at all the best YouTubers out there and just see sort of how their thumbnails look and then compare those to other YouTubers who are successful and then your thumbnails and you'll probably notice some things in common. And then when it comes to titles, you definitely want to make the title and the thumbnail together. The title and the thumbnail should never be made separately. Always make them together. And the reason for this is for one, you never want to repeat what you say in your title in the thumbnail. This is a cardinal sin of YouTube. Never, ever, ever repeat the title in the thumbnail. I see this all the time with newbies where the title would be like top five investments. And then on the thumbnail, it's also top five investments. Do not do that. The purpose of the thumbnail is to get the person to look at the title. And the purpose of the title is to get the person to click on the video. And then another thing I should mention with the icon method is when you find videos using the icon method, never, ever, ever copy their title or thumbnail. This is a massive mistake that people make. They'll find a video that's doing really well and they'll just copy the title and the thumbnail. Do not do that because when you do it, you are going to be competing directly against that video that's already has hundreds of thousands of views. And of course, it's going to beat you because of social proof. Which video you're going to click on? The one that has 10 views or the one that has 100,000 views? Of course, you're going to click on the one that has 100,000. But when it comes to these Carl Icon videos, the one thing you do want to potentially copy is the keyword in the title. So you either want to copy that keyword or you want to find a synonym for that keyword. So in my case, for instance, he talked about college majors. I used degrees. You can also use the YouTube search bar to come up with really good titles as well. Try to put the keyword as close to the front of the title as possible because that's going to be more SEO friendly. And then try to make the title as intriguing as possible, right? Try to give it some flair, a little bit of drama, a little bit of emotion. So for instance, the most useless degrees dot, 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 you might notice that everything except for the very first letter is not capitalized. Whereas on a lot of my videos, I capitalize every word. I did that for a reason because I was kind of going for a certain emotion with that title. Like I'm sort of just so disgusted with these degrees that I don't even want to capitalize the words. So like I said, there's a lot to titles and thumbnails. Maybe I'll make an entire video on them at some point if you guys would like. Next, number six, you want to obviously make great content. So think about this almost like a product as well. You have to have good marketing, good packaging in order to sell the product in the first place. But if it's a crappy product, people are going to refund it. People are not going to buy the product again. People are going to tell their friends it's a terrible product. And then eventually it will fail. So the product itself, aka your content, has to be good. And when it comes to creating educational content specifically, all educational content is basically a listicle. Books are listicles. Courses are listicles. Tutorials are listicles. They're just a step-by-step -step listicle. This video is a listicle. How-to videos are listicles. Even on podcasts, they usually have a list of topics that they're going to talk about, which means that podcasts are also listicles. So when you're thinking about making a video on a topic, basically just think about what are the most important things to talk about when it comes to this topic. Then make a list of those things and talk about them. And if you're somebody who already has experience on the topic, you're very passionate about the topic, or you're very good at it, you should be able to talk about it off the top of your head for the most part. But it definitely does help to have kind of like a bullet point style list under the listicles of things to talk about. Now, there are basically two different types of listicles. The first one that I was talking about is experience style listicles. This is where you talk about topics that you either have experience on, you're very good at, or you're very passionate about. And it's basically talking about ideas. The other type of listicle is a fact-based listicle. Now, this one is a little bit more difficult to make and it requires a lot more research and it's a little bit harder to write the scripts for. But it's also much easier to hire someone else to write those scripts for you because you're not talking about your own experiences, you're talking about facts. So a lot of the videos that I do are fact-based listicles. So for instance, the 21 highest paying work from home jobs, that is a fact-based listicle. I talk about different data that I collected from across the internet. And sure, I do give my opinion here and there, but for the most part, it's just data and facts that I'm talking about. I'm just gathering and collecting a lot of the different best resources from the cost of the internet and presenting it to someone. So those are two great ways to make good educational content. And of course, there's a lot more to it than this. Again, this is one where I could probably do an entire series of videos on how to do it. Let me know if you'd like that. And another way to make sure your content is good is to include metaphors, analogies, stories, and anecdotes. These are ways that you really breathe life into your content. You talk about your own experiences, for instance, or you talk about the experiences of other people. You give metaphors and analogies to explain complex subjects. You might also reference books or other educational channels or other just really good resources. This is how you really breathe life into your content and make it really good. And remember what I said about your ideal audience avatar being you from a few years ago? You should literally pretend 
pretend like you're talking to yourself from a few years ago. Like that is literally what I do. I pretend like I'm talking to a younger version of myself. And you're trying to convince them that what you're saying is right. Like imagine if you went back into 2012, 2013, and you were trying to convince yourself to buy Bitcoin, right? That's the kind of conviction that you want to have when you're talking to the younger version of yourself. Like, you know, because you saw that Bitcoin went up like 1000 X, but the younger version of yourself is going to be really skeptical of that. So you have to convince them. And that's another way that you can be really charismatic and make better content. Number seven I want to talk about is volume negates luck. And really, I'm not so sure that there is even such a thing as luck. There are probabilities and everything in life is a probability. So let's say, for instance, that you were trying to get better at baseball and so was your friend. Now, your friend tries to get better by watching videos on YouTube about baseball, reading books about how to swing a bat, studying how other people swing a bat. And he does that for three months before he actually swings the bat. You, on the other hand, go out and you start swinging the bat. Now, you might also be watching a little bit of content here and there, but you're putting the reps in. Who do you think is going to be better at hitting the ball and swinging the bat after three months? Of course, the person who's putting the reps in and swinging the bat is going to be better. And it's the same thing with YouTube. I see this all the time where people will think about some video they're going to make for like three months. They'll think about the video. They'll take a bunch of time researching it. And then they'll take a bunch of time script writing it. And then they'll, you know, take forever to come up with a perfect thumbnail and perfect title. And then they'll take forever to record and edit the video. And then finally, three months later, they have a video to post on YouTube. And then when it fails, they get really discouraged because it took them three months to make that video. And this is exactly what happened to me when I was first starting YouTube. So when I first started YouTube with this channel, I had kind of like an accountability buddy who was also starting YouTube at the same time. And he took three months to make his first video. By that time, I'd already made well over 10 videos. And by the time I made my 10th video, because of the fact that I'd put the reps in, that 10th video was better than his first video even though he put way more effort into it than I did. And the truth is, right now, if you've never made YouTube videos, you're probably like level zero out of 100 when it comes to skills. Maybe if you've made videos before, you're level like 10 or 20 out of 100. The only way you're gonna get up to a level like 80 out of 100 where you're gonna consistently be able to make really good videos is by putting the reps in. You have to make videos to get good at making videos. It's that simple. And going back to the baseball analogy, every time you make a video, you're kind of trying to hit a home run. You're trying to, get it to where it gets 100,000 views plus. The greatest baseball hitter of all time, arguably, is Barry Bonds, and he only hit the ball 29% of the time, right? That was his batting average. That means 70% of the time he missed, and a much greater percentage of the time he didn't hit a home run. So if you're trying to hit a home run on YouTube by just making one video that takes three months at a time, even if you're highly skilled, your chances of hitting a home run are extremely low. So if you're not highly skilled, it makes more sense to just make more video. Because like I said before, the number one reason that videos go off, the number one reason why they go viral is the idea, not all of the other stuff. So you just wanna make as many videos as possible to put in those reps and also give yourself more chances to succeed. So the solution here is volume and consistency and volume negates luck. So if you have like a 5% chance of a video popping off with you just kind of doing your best and just making sure that you're consistently uploading versus a 10% chance of it popping off if you spend three months on it, it makes much more sense for you to just make 10 of the 5% chance videos than one of the videos where you have a 10% chance. I hope that makes sense. A little bit of math there, a little bit of probability, but yeah, volume and consistency. Number eight, keep doing what works. So you're throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall. You're seeing what sticks. When something finally does stick, keep doing what is working. Double down on that for an extended period of time. So for me, the thing that really stuck at first was talking about college degrees. I kept doing that for like a year and a half, two years. Then later on, I started talking more about alternative education and careers. I kept doing that for a while. And then now I'm kind of at the point where I talk about remote jobs as well as talking about side hustles. So you can easily pivot later on. It's not a problem at all. But once you find something that works, make sure you double down on that and do that thing a lot. I put a lot in this video, but like I said, I am going to be doing a workshop where I go really deep on these concepts and go over a bunch of other stuff and also give you guys a bunch of really good resources. And that will be exactly 72 hours after this video post.
posts. So check the date down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And you can click on that as well if you're interested in attending the workshop. It will be a live Zoom session with me. I will be there. You'll be, get to talk to me, ask me questions, etc. So hope to meet you there. That would be awesome. And if you haven't checked it out already, go ahead and check out my video on the 21 highest paying work from home jobs since I mentioned that earlier in the video. And you can look at that by clicking right here.